well, well. Cyberpunk 2077 is finally about to be released until CD Projekt Red decides to suddenly delay it again. It's one of the world's most anticipated games, but do you know everything you should before dropping your hard-earned money on a copy? What's up, ProGuides fam? I'm Johnny Silver, Renox, and we here at ProGuides believe that everyone should know what they're signing up to when they buy a new video game. Those things aren't cheap after all. I mean, look at me. So before you dive into the world of cyberpunk, there are seven things that you should know before dipping into your wallet. But before all that, why not dip into the comment section to answer our question of the day. Are you still excited for Cyberpunk 2077? After all the delays and constant setbacks, it's understandable that a lot of people have already fallen off the excitement train when it comes to CD Projekt Red's upcoming title. Not me though, Johnny Silverhand. With many of us feeling like it might not ever release. So has your hype managed to endure? Leave a comment down below and we'll try to read every single one. And you, who are you? CD Projekt Red are well known for adapting pre-existing works. Their flagship Witcher series was of course based off a set of novels, and Cyberpunk 2077 is no different. Although instead of a novel, Cyberpunk 2077 is actually based off an 80s pen and paper RPG called Cyberpunk 2020. Wow, that's a weird coincidence. And later, Cyberpunk Red. The first edition of this game takes place in an alternate version of 2013, in a world where the major superpowers of the world have collapsed and mega corporations fight amongst themselves for dominance. Food blights cause famines, bioengineering is commonplace, and basically everyone is a cyborg kitted out with various cybernetic prosthetics. You guys know what's up. The video game takes a lot from the pen and paper RPG, ranging from its body mod centric gameplay and to its megacorp versus common person storyline. It's cool to see CD Projekt Red pay homage to such a cool and unique game, and the creator of the original has actually been pretty heavily involved too. Players of The Witcher 3 have probably gotten pretty used to playing CD Projekt Red titles in a third person perspective, to the degree that many might have expected it to carry on through to Cyberpunk 2077, but that couldn't actually be further from the truth. Cyberpunk 2077 is a completely first person game, switching only when you drive a vehicle, but CD Projekt Red has a pretty good set of reasons for that. Primarily, according to the lead level designer on the game, Pete Gellenserb, the first person perspective of Cyberpunk 2077 is really there so you can see all the things happening up close. CD Projekt Red didn't want its players to miss out on any of the details in the game, so they created the game with a first person perspective so you could really interact with things in a visceral manner while playing the game. Not everyone has been happy about this choice, however. With such a robust character creation system, many players were hoping that they would be able to see their character throughout most of the gameplay. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case. You'll likely only be able to see your rendition of V while driving, in cutscenes, and in reflective surfaces, if you have RTX enabled. There aren't many true first-person open-world RPGs out there, so it'll be interesting to see how this choice plays out over time. When you think about CD Projekt Red games, inevitably you have your mind brought back to once again the incredible Witcher 3. One of the things you probably think about is the colossal scale of that game's map. Novigrad and Skellig alone are bigger than games like Grand Theft Auto V in sheer size, and that isn't even counting the various other smaller locations that can be accessed. Night City and Cyberpunk 2077, on the other hand, won't be nearly as big. Cyberpunk 2077's map is expected to be around 24 square kilometers, which is even smaller than games like Skyrim and Red Dead Redemption. The Witcher's 3 landscape is over 100 square kilometers larger, but don't let Night City's deceptively meager size throw you off. With the megacity lacks in pure square kilometers, it sure makes up for in density. One of the classic staples of a game, movie, or book in the cyberpunk franchise is a tightly clustered megacity which is incredibly densely packed with gigantic buildings, and that's exactly the aesthetic Cyberpunk 2077 is looking to pull off. CD Projekt Red has said from the very beginning that they wanted the cyberpunk map to be a bit smaller, but considering most if not all of the buildings can be entered, it might not be so much of a big deal after all. Alongside Cyberpunk 2077's denser and smaller map, there's also going to be a smaller and denser main quest to tackle in comparison to The Witcher 3. According to Patrick Mills, the senior episode designer of Cyberpunk, CD Projekt Red got a whole bunch of complaints, saying that the main story of The Witcher 3 was too long, and that a lot of people played through the main story but didn't even quite reach the end. When you look at sites that collate completion times of video games, you can see that on average, if you head straight through the main campaign without doing anything in The Witcher 3, it would take around 32 and a half hours to play, while the average completion time sits closer to 53 and a half hours. That's a lot of time to sink into a video game, and it makes sense that they'd want to cut back a little bit. For those of you who might be worried about a potentially shorter game not having enough to do in it, 
that's not really a worry you should have because the developers are plugging a lot of effort into just about everything else. There's going to be a ton of side quests and the RPG elements of the game are supposedly going to be much deeper than that of The Witcher 3s. Oh, and there's going to be DLC expansions and multiplayer too, but we're going to mention those more in detail later on. Are you a PC player that hasn't managed to update their rig in a little while? I understand the pain. New parts can be expensive, and all the latest consoles have been snapped up by scalpers already. If you want to be able to pull 60 FPS on the highest possible settings, then you're probably going to need the newest bits of kit. But if you're willing to settle for a lower graphical quality experience and haven't been able to upgrade your rig for a while now, then you still might be able to run Cyberpunk 2077. Somehow, the developers over at CD Projekt Red have managed to make Cyberpunk incredibly computer friendly and able to run on systems with hardware from almost a decade ago. All you need to be able to run the game at 1080p low is a GTX 780, which was released back in May 2013, and an Intel Core i5-3570K, which launched even earlier in April 2012. It even runs on operating systems as far back as Windows 7. This all might sound pretty surprising right off the bat, but it's understandable to be a little bit skeptical on whether these are the official minimum requirements are going to be accurate or not. The truth of the matter is, these hardware components are likely only going to be able to get you around 30 FPS at 1080, unless CD Projekt Red has done some real magic to get it working on a rig that underpowered. While the map is smaller than The Witcher's 3, and the story is said to be a bit shorter than The Witcher's, if there is one thing that the game is going to have in common with its high fantasy counterpart, it's the DLC releases. The Witcher 3 was well known for its DLC, adding new missions and story elements completely for free. It seems that Cyberpunk 2077 will be following through suit with this method of DLC distribution, no doubt alongside some other paid expansions like The Witcher's 3 Heart of Stones or Blood and Wine expansions. Combined, these two DLCs added over 30 hours of new content, new gear, and new enemies to fight. They even also introduced new areas, such as the rich and vibrant lands of Tosanat that was added in the Blood and Wine expansion pack. Originally, we were meant to learn about these DLC packs before the game was even released, but as is commonplace with things where Cyberpunk 2077 is involved, the announcement of any DLC content for the game has been pushed back due to delays of the main game. The president of CD Projekt Red, Adam Kaczynski, has told investors that the initial plan was to unveil the DLC before the launch of the game, but thanks to all the delays, they have had to wait until the release of the game before they start talking about anything in the future. CD Projekt Red is a world leader in creating single-player narrative experiences. Their work on the Witcher series has been unparalleled, but they've never really managed to tap into the multiplayer market. Their only attempt with this was the Witcher card game Gwent, and while Gwent is a really fun time, it's not exactly a full game experience like the Witcher games. Cyberpunk 2077 is going to be different because eventually it is going to have a multiplayer component. When it comes to multiplayer in Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt Red are very clear that this isn't going to be something that can be dubbed a multiplayer mode. During CD Projekt Red's Q3 earnings call this year, the higher-ups at CD Projekt Red claimed that they're not calling it a mode at all. It's actually a separate gigantic production that they are thinking about internally as a completely standalone project built up from the base of the single-player cyberpunk that we'll all get to play this month. It's even being developed by a separate team of developers. While it's being treated as a separate project from a development standpoint, that doesn't mean that you're going to have to buy a whole separate game to play it. Instead, anyone who owned the original single player release of the game will get the multiplayer component as a free download. There's very little out in the wild about what we can expect with the upcoming multiplayer Cyberpunk 2077. We know that a few years ago, they hired developers called Digital Scrapes, who are based in Canada to work alongside their own in-house team on the multiplayer component. Digital Scrapes are probably best known for their work on Dying Light's Be the Zombie PvP mode, so we know they've got the capability to make something pretty impressive. We also know that there's going to be some form of microtransaction system planned for the multiplayer. CD Projekt Red has always been very respectful of their player base's money, having released plenty of free content for their games in the past. So it'll be interesting to see how exactly the microtransactions end up playing out when the multiplayer mode eventually releases. So guys, that's everything you need to know before buying and playing Cyberpunk 2077. With all this in mind, do you still think you'll be picking up the game? There's plenty to look forward to when it comes to CD Projekt Red's latest offering, including me, Johnny Silverhand, so let's all hope that they manage to actually ship the game this time. Because, let's face it, we're all pretty tired of waiting. Remember Pro Guides family, if you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and click that all important bell button so you get a notification whenever we upload a new video. That's going to be all from me, Johnny Silverhand, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn.